the 2000s, the dawn of the century, hope, rebirth, rejuvenation. The first 10 years of the new century initiated a unique era. To most people, it may not seem as iconic as the 90s or as dynamic as the 60s, but the 2000s were a harbinger of change. Although not all of it catches the eye, as soon as one starts to look at the underlying foundations, one begins to notice the changes in global lifestyle. With the arrival of technology into the mainstream, privacy became a valid concern. This wormhole decade transported us into a new reality. It seemed as if someone had sliced a hole in the space-time continuum. And in this new world, tech giants were ubiquitous. The economic shift was obvious, or at least it became so in retrospect, and global relations were redefined. Events like 9-11 ushered in a new era of world politics. Many events from the era, from the destruction of the World Trade Center to the humanitarian response to the Haiti earthquake, have been embedded into the minds of an entire generation. Whereas most of the changes brought on by the dawn of the century seemed inevitable, their impact was far more significant than anyone could have expected. We remember some of the big moments, but we often fail to recall just how much changed within a short period. In a decade filled with major events, we take a look at 10 you may have forgotten. Y2K Where should one start but at the beginning? The Y2K fiasco might have its roots in the late 90s, but the arrival of the new century was thought to have prompted these alleged changes. For those of you who do not remember why Y2K was a big deal, let us refresh your memories. Y2K was a widespread fear that computers around the globe might stop working on January 1st, 2000. The crux of the matter can be traced to the number of digits allocated for keeping track of the current year. At the time, computers only had two digits for this purpose, so 1999 would simply be 99. With the new millennium approaching, there was a need for four digits to separate our century from the other. There was widespread fear some of it unwarranted and some exaggerated by conspiracy theories, that this small bug would wreak havoc worldwide. People claimed that planes would fall out of the sky, banking databases would become corrupt, and government records would be erased. All of this contributed to a sense of general panic among the public. Many organizations and governments came together to solve the issue. One simple solution was that software opted for four digits for saving the year. When the dreaded date arrived, there were no issues outside of a few routine malfunctions. The Human Genome Project The Human Genome Project was an international project that aimed to identify, map, and sequence the genes of the entire human genome. In 2003, news arrived that the project had reached its completion. It had been in the pipeline since 1984, and it started in 1990. The research was funded by NIH in the U.S as well as various organizations from around the world. Research centers in the UK, Japan, China, France, and Germany contributed to the project. When the project was deemed complete in 2003, 92% of genes had been mapped. The rest, 8%, could not be sequenced because of technological limitations at the time. This 8% was sequenced almost two decades later, and now the entire human genome has been sequenced. For the most part, a large part of the human genome is the same, but a small percentage of it often varies from individual to individual, so there is no universal standard. The Human Genome Project sequenced some people and assembled a complete sequence from them. The Death of Pope John Paul II Pope John Paul II was the first non-Italian pope since the 16th century. He was also quite the wanderer and traveled more times than all the previous popes combined attracting large crowds wherever he went. He also spoke eight languages, including Polish, his native language, as well as Italian, French, German, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Latin, although he had a working knowledge of several other languages. People associated him with an unwavering, unapologetic stance against the horrors of war under communist rule. In the latter years of his life, he suffered from Parkinson's disease, and following a tracheotomy, he could not speak to his audiences. The Pope had previously escaped death when he was shot in 1981, but the disease was too much to handle this time. He was hospitalized in February 2005, and two months later, on April 2nd, he passed away. The funeral was held on April 8th. 
people flocked to Vatican City to take a final look at their beloved Pope. The funeral was attended by more than 4 million people in Rome alone, which is not far from Vatican City. More than 2 billion people tuned in to watch the event, making it one of the most watched live events in television history. He was succeeded by Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, now remembered as Pope Benedict XVI, followed by Pope Francis, the current Pope in 2013. Boxing Day Tsunami December 26, 2004 An earthquake of 9.1 magnitude, one of the highest in recorded history, ripped through the Indian Ocean, lasting about 10 minutes. The resulting tsunami headed toward the shores. Banda Asa in northern Sumatra was the closest city to the earthquake's epicenter and was hit within 20 minutes of the earthquake. The waves kept traveling at 500 miles per hour and hit Thailand. Then it hit India and Sri Lanka on the other side of the Indian Ocean. After eight hours, the tsunami was reported to have reached South Africa, around 5,000 miles away from the earthquake's origin. Within a matter of hours, there were thousands of casualties. After a few days, the death count was estimated to be 230,000. It was the third largest earthquake ever recorded and had a Mercalli intensity of up to nine in some areas. The Danish Cartoon Crisis On September 30, 2005, the Danish newspaper Jillens Posten published a dozen cartoons by Kurt Westergaard. Normally, this kind of news would not have attracted any attention, but these cartoons had the headline, The Face of Muhammad. The cartoons, considered blasphemous by many in the Muslim world, sparked outrage, with several protests around the globe, and the controversial cartoons became an international news story. The newspaper had invited people to draw Muhammad as they see him, so some of the depictions were ambiguous and abstract, and some did not portray the Islamic prophet. Art Spiegelman, the author of the renowned graphic novel Moss, thought that one of the depictions showed five Pac-Men eating stars and crescents. The Islamic faith has a tradition of aniconism, not drawing sentient beings, which is why Islamic art is mostly relegated to calligraphy and design. The faith forbids the portrayal of their prophet, and according to some, this was a violation of that order. Far-right Islamists claim that it was a sign of disrespect towards Muhammad. The Peak of Flip Phones This one is less of an event and more of a phenomenon, but seeing how flip phones are making a comeback, it deserves a spot on this list. The first flip phone, Motorola StarTac, came out in 1996. The phone was influenced by an earlier design in which the flap covered just the buttons. Flip phones became increasingly popular in the late 90s, and by the early 2000s, almost everyone had one. Seen as cool and stylish, it had almost become a fashion accessory. It was a must-have commodity before smartphones took over. By 2010, flip phones were dying a slow death. Still, this cultural phenomenon was nothing short of exceptional. Who does not remember playing snake games on their Motorola? The Swine Flu Pandemic In 2009, there was an outbreak of the swine flu. The flu was caused by the H1N1 influenza virus. According to projections, the flu could have affected mildly or otherwise around 700 million to 1.4 billion people in the world. Estimates of the death count vary. Some claim it was closer to 18,000, while others claim it ranged from 150,000 to 575,000. Additional deaths caused by respiratory problems brought on by the disease are estimated to be somewhere between 148,000 and 249,000. However, it was shown in a 2010 study that the risk of death by the swine flu was no more than the average seasonal flu. The Oldest Skeleton of a Human Ancestor In 2009, a team of scientists and archaeologists announced the discovery of the oldest fossil skeleton of a human ancestor. The specimen, found in Ethiopia, was named Ardi, and according to initial estimates, she lived around 4.4 million years ago. The hominid skeleton was reconstructed from a batch of fossils. Ardipithecus ramidus, the hominid species, was 1.2 million years older than the skeleton of Lucy, the skeleton found in 1973 and believed to have lived 3.2 million years ago. Scientists were interested in understanding the missing link between the current human form and the earlier species from which we evolved. In that respect, it was thought that the discovery would radically revolutionize our understanding of earlier species and human evolution. 
Nowadays, some regard Artie as a part of an extinct form of ape, while others argue that she was a part of the human chain. Israel pulls out of Gaza The Israeli-Palestine conflict is often in the spotlight these days. It was no different back in the 2000s, but the big news arrived in 2005 when Israel decided to disengage from the Gaza Strip. The Israeli authorities opted for the Disengagement Plan Implementation Law, according to which they would retreat from Gaza. The Israeli authorities offered huge sums of money to the Israeli settler families, up to $200,000. Some people voluntarily left their homes for monetary compensation. Israeli forces eventually evicted others who did not leave their homes until August. By September, the security personnel had also evacuated. However, according to almost all media outlets and international human rights organizations, the Gaza Strip is still occupied by Israel, as it controls the air and maritime space. Some critics have even gone as far as to call Gaza an open-air prison, a term that has gained traction in recent years. Israel still controls everything and everyone that goes in and out of Gaza, including water and electricity. They also control the borders and infrastructure since they maintain the registries of buildings and people. In 2005, some saw the exercise as a ray of hope, while others claimed it was a stalling tactic. In retrospect, the entire incident seems to have achieved nothing for the Palestinians, except for bringing more conflict. WikiLeaks We end with another event that remains relevant to this day, WikiLeaks. The media organization and website had surfaced in 2006, but it caught everyone's attention in 2010 when it revealed almost half a million documents. Most of these documents were quite compromising to national governments around the world. From the operating procedures of Guantanamo Bay to corruption scandals in Kenya, the leak was wide-ranging and put WikiLeaks in a difficult position. The hacker and journalist behind the leaks, Julian Assange, was targeted by many institutes, organizations, individuals, and governments worldwide. U.S. government personnel pushed for persecuting the Australian. In December 2010, the WikiLeaks site was forced offline, but it continued to exist through mirror sites. Being sought by so many angry entities and Britain rejecting his appeals, Assange sought refuge and political asylum in Ecuador's embassy in London, which Ecuador granted in August 2012. The payment companies that facilitated fundraising for the organization, PayPal, Visa, and MasterCard, refused to let their systems be used for WikiLeaks donations. In 2019, Julian Assange was arrested by the London Metropolitan Police for failing to appear in court. As of the writing of this video, he is still there. We hope you enjoyed this video on top 10 major events of the 2000s you may have forgotten. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. The link is in the description.